Hello! Today we'll look at antique quilts, what to look for in them, and how to quilt them. Marcia Stevens is here, and she's going to show us some great ways to incorporate patterns into borders and inserts. And we'll see how to load more than one quilt on the machine. So stay tuned. Linda's Long Arm Quilting is aired free to you by Gamel Quilting Systems Vision 2. Innovation taken to the next level. My stitch, my vision, my gamel. If you're working as a professional quilter, you soon see that it's important to streamline your work. The faster you can get things done and still maintain high quality, the better off you are. Here's a trick that can help make your work more efficient. You can load more than one quilt onto your machine at a time. You may want to do this for a variety of reasons. So you can begin one project immediately after finishing another. It can save you an immense amount of time by loading just one large piece of lining. You can load quilts side by side by pinning a piece of fabric or quilted fabric in between for stabilization. You can sew a piece of fabric in between the lining or backing pieces and load them together vertically. Antique quilt tops are all around us, under the bed, in the cedar chest, at garage sales, or hanging at quilt shows. These special pieces take special care and can present special problems. So we're going to see what to look for in an antique quilt and how we quilt it. There are a few things that I look for when I am buying old quilt tops. Let me kind of go through that with you. This is an antique feathered star, and I loved the colors in this quilt. Even though, of course, as I looked at it, I can see that some of the piecing is off. I can deal with, with any of that. I also noticed that there are some places, especially in the middle, where I really have kind of a little volcano, and there are some seams that are coming undone that the stitches have broken. Now, if you don't want to take the time to repair those, then this wouldn't be a good buy for you. But because I like the colors, I knew that I would be willing to look over every single one of those seams and repair those seams before I quilted it. One of the things I do, oftentimes, if I can find a good bargain, is I will take a quilt top like this. Now this isn't necessarily appealing, it's just patchwork and you know the fabrics are old and there's plaids and there's paisleys and all kinds of fabrics and ginghams. Um, but I will buy this top because I can use it for the back of another antique top. Let me show you one that I have completed that way. Here's one. This was a great big grandma's garden. Wow. Um, and I quilted each of these areas differently. I just had so much fun with this. But on the back of the quilt, I had an old bow tie quilt top. And so I matched up the sizes, even though I had to trim a little bit off of the back. Um, this is a good way to use those old tops where they're not as well pieced or they're, you know, not the fabric isn't as wonderful as the top. But I didn't have to use a muslin back and it was almost less expensive than buying a new backing for it. And oftentimes you'll find um, a quilt top that really would do well with custom quilting like this one. I thought, wow, I could do some fabulous feathers in here and then just maybe do some stitch in the ditch in this area. And so I'm always thinking about how I'm going to quilt them when I buy them. And I imagine in my mind how that quilt is going to look when it's finished. And if I can do that, I can turn that quilt into a masterpiece to hang on my quilt rack. Here's another one that would be um, an interesting one to do a beautiful feathered wreath in this white area. Even though the fabrics are not that wonderful, we could turn this into a wonderful quilt. And it's certainly worth your time when it doesn't take that much time to get these finished. Another thing to consider is the edging on the quilts. Now, the quilt that I have on today has um, this odd edge. This is a grandma's flower garden. And so it has the pointed edge. So I want to show you how to load that. 
But I also want to show you what you can do if you to finish this edge, if you want to keep this in this um, with this shape. Here's one that I just love. This one's um, finished, and this one does have a white uh, bleached muslin on the back of it. Now, because I wanted to do keep this edge that the quilt came with, I I didn't want to do binding on each one of these points. That would take an extreme amount of time. So I simply faced it with fabric. That means I put right side down with a long strip of fabric and sewed around these edges and then flipped it over and then just hand stitched it down on the other side there. And you can see where the quilted part is. And then this came over the edge after it was quilted. So there's an idea for you if you want to keep that edge but you don't want to bind every single little corner inside and outside. That could be quite a pain. Here's another idea. This is a darling little grandma's flower garden, kind of a, more of a miniature. And this one was already cut off, but didn't have an edge on it. So I just added a muslin border on, because that's probably what they would have added in those days. Um, and I didn't have any of these fabrics to do that with. So you can add these on. And antique quilts or older quilts are most likely going to be maybe a double size or a large single. They're not going to be queen size. They're not going to be king size. And if you want to use that on your bed, say you have one in your cedar chest that your great grandmother pieced, you want to use it on your bed. You don't want to just have it on display, but actually use it. Then you're going to need to add something onto the borders to make it larger so that you can use it on your bed. So there's an idea for you. This one too, again, has um, an old quilt top for the backing. Now let me show you what we will do with this odd edge here at the bottom of the, of the machine. I have my top canvas here and I am going to um, pin the inside edge like that. I'm going to take my pin and put that right there where the inside edge is. And I'm going to allow this top edge where it comes out to the V to just hang over like that. I'm going to come over to the next edge on the inside and put a pin there. And then in between, I will put a pin right there. And see, I'm just letting this flap over. What I want to do is establish a straight line because when I put an even pull on this edge, I want it to be even. I don't want to put any stress or strain on the um, point of the quilt. Because most of these are, as this one is, hand pieced. And so you have to be very careful with the amount of um, pull that you put on your roller. So I would continue to pin that entire top on. Now for the top edge, I have loaded the lining and the batting. And I have stitched, using my channel lock, I stitched a line all the way across. So it's it perfectly even, straight, and um, also parallel to the canvas top. And then I brought each point up to that line. And then I carefully pinned and just stitched the edge. And I made sure that the where I stitched was like an eighth of an inch on the inside. I didn't come in very far because I'm not sure how I'm going to finish it. Probably will either face it. I might perhaps actually use a binding on this one because it's pretty straight. But um, I don't want any of the stitching to show later. And you could use a basting stitch there if you wanted. But you can see how nice flat, what a nice flat application that is. And so this would all have a nice even pull on it. I have a little um, sheet here where I've done some designing, and um, I'm just going to show you some of the things that I might do on a grandma's garden. In the middle of this one, I'm going to do a little flower. It's a grandma's flower garden, so let's do a little flower in here. And I will start with a circle in the middle, okay, 
And then I'm going to use each one of these points as uh, my guide, and I'm going to make a petal go out to the point, go out to the point, to the point, to the point, to the point, and the last one. Um, I might even go around the center again just to kind of give it a little bit more um, indentation to make it look uh, and really stand out a little bit more. And then I'm going to come out. I'm just going to follow one of the petals out and follow up one of the seams. And I'm going to do this very straight. Now, if you wanted to, if you're a little leery of doing that straight line freehand, you can use your ruler and you just go from seam to seam like this using the foot width as your guide to do that. And then I just follow up in a seam like this and I will do the outside of this. But I generally do it freehand because you know I can do a straight line so easy. Watch how fast it takes me to, uh, how long it takes me to actually complete this flower on this. So let's come out here and I'm just working my way through this seam here like that. And out here I think I'll go ahead and do um, a little circular design. I'll just go from, from seam to seam like that. And then I could just echo what I've already done. And I love the repetitiveness of that. We'll go clear out. You can just make half circles all the way out. This is your flower. There we go. That's how we get back to where we were. There we go, and then I'll come out here to a seam. And I love that. That would really add a lot of texture in your quilt. Okay, I'm going to move over to the next flower now, and I'm going to start in the middle of this one as well. This time, I'm going to put little circular designs in here so it look like little seeds in the middle. And I love the relief that that, that, that gives. Just keep doing these circles. Like that. Let me cut my thread right here. And in this nice green area, I'm going to uh, do a an, like an L, and then a little E, and then an L, clear up to the top, little E, another L on the seam. So I'm using the piecework as my guide, and these are just L's and E's. You know, this is penmanship. We can, we can all do this. And on the outside, this is quite a busy fabric out here. I may do something just very simple out here to break this up. And that would just be a patterned meandering like this. That also gives the illusion of um, just bright like that. Because it's a little smaller at the bottom. It gets a little closer down here at the bottom and then it swings out at the top like that. And um, that will just pop that flower right out. And this would also be a good design to put into your light area. And, uh, or you could do leaves, or you could do stippling out here, or you could just do traditional, just your quarter inch or continuous curve. So you can see that you just can let your imagination run with you. So good luck and have fun. Next time on Linda's Long Arm Quilting, we see how to do shadow and reverse trapunto easily on the long arm machine. Harry Walner shows us some fun and easy trapunto techniques, and we'll see some good ways to store your thread and bobbins. Remember, if I can do it, you can do it. See you next time. I'm having so much fun with my new Gamel Vision 2. I have customized my right handle to the start and stop, and my tie-off feature as well. My left handle has not only the needle position, so I can have my needle start and stop down, but also my stitch button, which toggles between stitch modes. This just keeps getting better and better as I envision more possibilities in my quilting applications. Being able to customize the four buttons on the handles has given my creativity wings. 
my stitch, my vision, my gamble.